Assalamu alaikum, dear brothers and sisters and respected elders. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. A'udhu billah. Rabbi jalli muqimu salati wa min dhurriyati. Rabbana wa taqabdu dhuwa. Rabbana firli wa li walidaya wa lil mu'minina yawma yakum al-bisar. Amma ba'd. Inni usi nafsi wa iyaakum bi taqwa Allah. In today's khutbah, inshaAllah, we will look at four different actions that the Prophet did or did not do that make him special. And we will look at how we can implement those actions and in our own lives to become better individuals. We should note that the Prophet was a walking, talking Quran. He embodied everything that the Quran teaches and tells us to be. So if we follow the Sunnah, then we follow the Quran. It is reported in Hidmati that the Prophet said in a hadith, whoever revives an aspect of my sunnah that is forgotten after my death, he will have a reward equivalent to that of the people who follow him, without it detracting in the least from their reward. This hadith shows us the immense reward that comes in implementing the sunnah of the Prophet So if we can even take one sunnah that is mentioned today, Implement it in our lives, God willing, there will be much reward and many blessings for us. The first sunnah of the Prophet we will look at today is number one, he didn't argue for the sake of argumentation. The Prophet Muhammad never bickered or got into vocal fights with anyone. He either tried to end the confrontation or he remained silent and left. This is a very rare trait to have, and we don't find this quality in many people today. Leaving argumentation is a very important sunnah that we need to bring back into our lives. All over the place, we see people arguing and fighting over meaningless topics. If you have social media, especially Facebook or Twitter, you have seen people spend spend time arguing. You've seen them in the <coughs> fighting, arguing behind their keyboards. I know of people that have even gone into fights over whether Michael Jordan or LeBron James is better. People get angry with each other over this type of minutia, and it doesn't get anyone anywhere. Argumentation just leaves a bad taste in your mouth and creates fitna, conflict. Abu Umayma, Rabbi Allah, who reported, the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said, I guarantee a house on the outskirts of paradise for one who leaves arguments even if he is right. This hadith stresses to us the importance of leaving arguments in order to keep the peace amongst our brothers and sisters. Abu Hanifa once saw his son debating an atheist, and he pulled his son aside and told him immediately to stop debating the atheist. His son was puzzled and said, but father, I have seen you debate people about their faith communities all the time. Abu Hanifa replied, when my generation debated, we debated for the truth, but your generation debates just for the sake of winning. Imagine how far we are from that noble generation. Imam Shafi said that before he debated anyone, he would pray that the truth be manifested on their tongue. This means that it wasn't important to him that he be the one who was correct. He just wanted the correct thing to be said by anyone, even if it was his own opponent. Number two, the Prophet Muhammad would turn his entire body and face a person when talking or listening to someone. He would be present in the conversation. Whenever someone came to the Prophet Muhammad, he would face them with his entire being. He would focus his entire attention and being towards them. This habit of his made people feel special and close to the Prophet. Every Sahaba thought he was the most beloved to the Prophet Today, it's very rare to find people who who are really present with you when you talk to them. This is especially rare to find in us youth. When people talk to us, we're always twitching and averting our eyes. We're on our phones, looking down. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh, yes. Half in a real conversation, half in a digital one. One of the few times God Almighty reprimanded his beloved Prophet was when the 
the Prophet ﷺ turned and looked away. We all know the incident mentioned in the Qur'an. One day our beloved Prophet ﷺ was talking to an influential man of another faith community. And the Prophet ﷺ knew that if this man converted, many other people were likely to join into the fold of Islam as well. So the Prophet ﷺ was deep in conversation with this man. And while he was talking to him, an older blind uncle came up to the Prophet ﷺ and tried to talk to him. The constant interruption frustrated our Prophet ﷺ a little bit. And he eventually frowned and turned away from the blind man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the verses in Surah Abasa in which he scolds the Prophet ﷺ for the one time he turned away. It is important to note that the Prophet ﷺ was corrected for choosing a good action over a better one. He didn't do anything bad. Number three, our Prophet ﷺ was always smiling. Abdullah bin Harith radiallahu anhu said in a hadith related by Tirmidhi, I have never seen a man who smiled as much as the Messenger of God sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A smile a day keeps the psychiatrist away. Smiling can change a person's day. It has been scientifically proven that smiling helps with mental health and attitude, and it takes less muscles to smile than to frown. There is a very beautiful quote from a Buddhist monk where he says, sometimes your joy is the source of your smile, but sometimes your smile is the source of your joy. Abu Dhab, where the Allah Prophet reported that the Messenger of God, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, your smile for your brother is charity. The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is telling us that you get the sadaqah just for smiling. Think about that for a moment. This is truly beautiful. Smiling is so easy. It is definitely one sunnah that we can all implement. Number four, the Prophet ﷺ became angry only for the sake of Allah, and he loved only for the sake of Allah. Whenever the Prophet ﷺ loved someone or something, he loved the person or action for the sake of Allah. And whenever he disliked someone or something, he disliked the person or the action for the sake of Allah. In the spirit of this sunnah, the Muslim community should hate the hatred that led to the tragedy in Charlottesville, Virginia a couple of weeks ago and to the tragedy in Barcelona, Spain last Thursday. But we are only angry for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in By now, we have all heard what happened in Charlottesville, Virginia a couple of weeks ago when a group of white supremacists and neo-Nazis gathered with torches chanting racist slogans. One white supremacist killed a, pe a peaceful protester and injured 19 others. We all know what happened last week when ISIS claimed responsibility for attacking and killing 13 people in Barcelona in the name of Islam. In the first part of this khutbah, we talked about the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad And when we study the sunnah, one of the things we realize about the sunnah is that it is pure beauty. Everything about what the Prophet did was beautiful. So what we Muslims have to do is turn back to the sunnah of our beloved Prophet so that we can wage beauty and not ugliness in these confusing times. Part of our problem as an Ummah is that we have abandoned the Sunnah. We have to return to the Sunnah. If ISIS knew the true Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, they would realize they are, that their attacks are outright wrong, but they just don't know. In Surah Al-Hadid, Ayah 57, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he sent all of the Prophets to help establish Qist, which means peace justice, equity, and fairness in Arabic. This includes our Prophet Muhammad He was sent down to establish this, and we, as his ummah, have to continue to, to represent what the Prophet stood for. So what can we do? What can you do? 
the white supremacists are coming to the Bay Area. Tomorrow, August 26th, they will be at Pissy Field in San Francisco promoting their hatred, racism, and bigotry. They will be on Berkeley, they will be in Berkeley on Sunday. God willing, the free Muslims could go to represent our prophets of Allah Muslim peacefully and to stand with our brothers and sisters who are oppressed and marginalized, that would be amazing. Building alliances and coalitions with other communities was one of the main empowerment strategies of the Prophet And he always stood for justice, so, 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 so we should also. You can go online to find more details. To conclude, let's discuss the fact that for most of us students, school is starting or just started recently. If we implement any sunnahs, but specifically the four sunnahs mentioned today, you will be helped greatly in both our deen and our dunya our religion and our worldly affairs. If you, one, not, if you implement one, not arguing for the sake of arguing, two, turning your body and being present, present in your conversations, three, smiling, and four, loving what Allah loves and hating what Allah hates, you will be set to succeed in middle school and in high school and in college. Those of you in middle school or high school know the haram that goes down in those environments. And inshallah, these sunnahs can be a protection for you if you do them with the intention of following the Prophet وسلم, and not because you want to impress people. However, the power of these sunnahs is that they will by default automa automatically make you stand out as a person of good character. People will notice you and will respect you, especially your peers and your teachers, even if you're not trying to impress them. Imitating the Prophet Wasallam's character will make people recognize you as someone with principles and morals. They will appreciate you all the more for it. <coughs> Everyone appreciates good other, good manners. You simply cannot go wrong if you follow the best of creation, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Everything said today was a reminder, first and foremost, for myself. Anything said that was beneficial was only from the mercy of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything said that was incorrect was from this amateur khatib's own faults. May Allah forgive us all. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. Inna Allah wa malaikatu yusallun ala al-nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد <تصفيق> ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقينا عذاب النار أستغفر الله لي ولكم إقامة السلام <تصفيق>